What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today we've got some daily knockout tournament gameplay, trying to win that 7.5k pack and then we're going to go live and, and look at the team, some improvements and the account. You'll see very early on um, in this, this video that I've made some huge signings to the team. We're going to talk about those after the gameplay. Uh, I've got it a bit arse backwards for today's video. But uh, that's how it's going to be. Now, you'll notice right now there's no face cam. That is because I am a little under the weather and uh, it's just not very nice. And you'll even hear it in the live comm section where there is face cam. So if you do want face cam, don't worry, it will come. Now, there's only seven minutes of gameplay, dude. So I've only got one comment because there's something I want to talk about that I think could be important. Uh, and also want to try and get through team of the season discussion for monthlies. Uh, Big Body 907 says, what's good, Nep? It's all good, Big Body 907. It's all good. He says, you talk about you watching pro players' videos or, or streams to see what they do and how they play and then try and implement that into your own gameplay. And obviously that's what we do as viewers. Did you ever start thinking about starting a series called The Lab where you play pro players then discuss with them over a Skype call on what you did right, wrong and things you could do to become a better player. At the same time, that would make us better. Maybe even do it to where once a week we have an episode where a lucky sub or Twitter follower can submit gameplay and you could talk about it and give tips as well. The videos will be most likely longer, but the content and exposure for you both and the pro will be awesome, and the series will be groundbreaking thoughts, lovely videos, keep up the great work. Um, interestingly, dude, uh, to, to break this down a little bit, I, I do think watching gameplay of pro players and top 100 players is an effective way to learn in this game. Um, I don't believe copying players, formations, tactics, and, and instructions is an effective way to improve because I think those are the sort of things that you need to learn yourself to or to feel yourself, whether or not they're going to be good or bad for you. But in terms of the actual game mechanics and what's broken and why, you know, the body feints, the backwards uh, skill dribble, the ball rolls, the heel-to-heel -heel flick, the, the low-driven shots, the inside passes, the way to defend... I think you can pick up a lot by watching the pro players play. But as something I've said over the year and something that I don't really take on board myself enough is that also watching your own gameplay back uh, some days later even, sometimes an hour later, but a lot of the times days later can be really, really influential to you growing as a player. Uh, I used to watch a lot of my Foot Champs gameplay back. I don't so much anymore. and I don't know why. I don't know why I stopped watching it back. Um, but there's always, there's always something to be learned from watching your own gameplay back because you'll see things offensively and defensively that you did wrong and you'll be like, God damn it, man. Like, even in games where you feel like the game was against you, you know, where you're like, oh, man, I tried to do this, this, and this, and this game just screwed me. This game wanted this guy to win. And then you watch it back and you're like, holy crap, when I was here... I could have passed it inside, I tried to do a skill move on the outside, I had an obvious pass there, I lost the ball, he counted me and scored. It's a really good way, watching your own gameplay back, um, to, to learn from your own mistakes. And it's very hard to accept that in a game, in the heat of the moment, when you're very angry, it's very hard to accept that uh, you, know, you did wrong and the game didn't screw you. Um, so... In terms of playing pros, I already play pros on my main channel and, and on some of the pro players' channels and stuff uh, a little bit here and there. Although I do think you can learn things from pros, from playing them and from watching them, I, I, think, um, I think more importantly, uh, you learn things from playing the game in general and incorporating the things that you learn to being at a, um, a muscle memory level. It's all well and good watching a pro play, and you see it after regionals all the time. After regionals, what I, what I see in the weekend league is a lot of people trying the things that the pros do, and then either being successful or unsuccessful, but because it doesn't become muscle memory, they don't stick with it. So every time I watch regionals, one thing that I'll see after that is I'll see a lot of people do the skill dribbling, you know, the LTRT dribbling, the close uh, control dribbling. I'll see it a lot. But then it'll die out over the next few weeks. And that's because I think, oh, he does that, let me do that. But then you've got to like make sure that you force it into your gameplay so that it becomes your natural technique, not something that uh, you do for a game or two after you see a pro do it. And then, you know, you get into a tough game, all these new techniques go out the window and they never return. And I, and I think that's an important thing in this game as well, is, you know, finding the things that work and... Practicing with them in divisions and, and in online singles and in daily knockout tournament so that they become the normal thing for you. Not the, oh my god, look at this technique. Wow, that was pretty awesome. Oh god, this guy's really good. Let this technique go out the window. This is what was costing me. 
and then going back to your old ways. But instead, it's got to be like, oh my God, this technique was awesome. Let me, whether I win or lose in divisions whilst practicing with it, let me just force it into my game so that, uh, you know, come the weekend league, it's something that's natural. In terms of analyzing gameplay, I did it on stream once. Um, I, I tried to analyze gameplay of, of some of people who thought the game was against them. But I would absolutely love to analyze people's gameplay. I would love to analyze my own gameplay, whether it be by myself on stream or on video, or whether it be with another YouTuber or a top 100 or a pro player talking about the ins and outs of the games and how it went. I would love to do that. The problem is the software isn't there right now. The, the technology isn't there right now for a FIFA streamer to analyze FIFA gameplay the way I'd want to. You know how Monday Night Football analyzes gameplay? I'm not saying I want to like have it like Monday Night Football, but I want to be able to draw arrows and circles and different colors and, and pause and uh, speed up gameplay and, and slow down gameplay. And I literally don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it um, while streaming and I don't know how to do it efficiently on a video. Of course, I could do it on a video by just post editing the video. Um, but I've tried that before in like FIFA 14 or FIFA 15 and let me tell you it took me absolutely hours to get the circles correctly I did a tutorial for something. Uh, I think it was called the outball or the yeah the, the, yeah, the outball It was called the outball showing people how when you've got the ball in defense Here's options that you have to get rid of it safely and cleanly um, and it was a really really good video um, With uh, with the amount of content that I upload right now and the amount of work that I do and the amount of games that I play due to foot champs and stuff I don't have the time to edit videos to that detail anymore um, so if you guys know of a program that allows me to draw arrows and circles and like Monday Night Football, you know, like literally click a button and then click again and it's a circle and then click another button and it's a different color circle. If you guys know how to do that over live gameplay or if there's a software program out there or something for streaming, that would be really, really helpful and I would really, really appreciate it. Anyway, dudes, we won the tournament on the first try of asking, the first time of asking. Um, we end up getting ourselves the 1,500 coins and the seven and a half K pack. I was initially saving the packs for uh, footies, but it seems like you're not going to be able to pack footies anyway. So I don't know. I don't know when to open the packs now. So we'll discuss that in just a second. But this, guys, is going to be the end of the gameplay. Let's go live. Okay, guys. So this is where we're at on the account right now. Um, I hope I've got the clip of me selling name Golan because it was important to who I bought. You would have seen some of the other purchases and sales as well. Um, if I can't find the clip for me selling Nain Golan, because I, 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 I sold him and I kept him on a trade pile and then I accidentally pressed the left trigger whilst on the trade pile on stream. I sold Jorgensen for 40k. Uh, just a lot of bronze pack method going on, picking up some players worth some stuff, selling them on, and just generally stocking the club back up. Um, but yeah, the, the, the sale of um, Jorgensen was very important to me purchasing the players that I purchased. You would have seen me purchasing them, um, or you would have seen them in action in this video so far. But what I want to do, why we've gone live right now, is because I want to take you guys through everyone that I bought, how much I bought them for, uh, talk about what I've sold, and more importantly, why I've changed the team. Uh, what, you know, what went into... Uh, what reasoning basically went into me swapping my team around and, and changing to what I've got now. Um, 2.6, 3.9, let's list them up for 2.5. Um, bronze pack method as well, by the way, right now, dudes, can be pretty uh, pretty awesome. Um, it can be pretty awesome. Uh, I've, I've had some uh, varying degrees of success put by packing players and some, uh, you know, bad luck as well. Um, but generally speaking, we, we're generating quite a lot of coins out of BPM again. That was because of marquee matchups. There was a lot um, of bronze players available, like required for marquee matchups. They're obviously not required anymore. But with footies coming on Friday and the likelihood of lots more SBCs and such, um, it's very much looking like um, bronze pack method again. You know, assuming that uh, bronze packs are required. Uh, or, or bronze items are required for a lot of what's coming. Looks like bronze pack method might be good again. One of the other main reasons for me looking at bronze pack method recently, so I'm just going through the trade pile here just to get, like, I just need to relist these items that aren't selling for their price that I listed them at and dropping them down a bit, um, is because I'm going to need fitness cards for this weekend league. And the reason why I'm going to need fitness cards for this weekend league is because um, I am back to using one team forever. 
or at least for this weekend league. Uh, maybe not forever, but uh, yeah, I'm going back to using one team, and we, we talked about why uh, very recently. Um, you know, in the last video, actually, we talked about why the reason why I want to go back to using one team is because I've got an amazing team now. You know, I've got a really amazing team, and I want to use those players. I don't want to be stuck using players that I I, I like and would like to use in in a in, a, in an ideal world. Um, I would use Al Sommer as my striker, or I would use Jorgensen as my striker instead of this team of the season, Lukaku. The problem is I can't put them in there without the uh, without the chemistry getting ruined. So I, you know, that's where we're at. So who did I buy? Why did I buy them? What am I doing? So I bought Van der Sar guys for 160,000 coins. I bought Team of the Year Danny Alves for 319,000 coins. Um, I bought Team of the Season Bali for 226,000 coins. Uh, we already had Team of the Season Ramos that we picked up for 374. I also already had Team of the Season Marcelo for 168. I went and bought Team of the Year Modric for 571. Um, that's, that was a huge purchase. 600,000 coins still for this card. It is a great card, right? No, Make no bones about it. You can see there as well in the 17 games he's played for me, two goals and 10 assists. That's that specifically assists. That's a return. I just don't get out of my midfielders. Uh, we own Dendonka as a pack pool player. Um, he is a very important cog in this wheel. We went and bought Hamshik for 265. Uh, we went and bought Mertens previously for 595. We bought Lukaku for 444. And our biggest purchase on this team, other than Nain Golan ever, is Eden Hazard for 988. And Eden Hazard, as you can see, has got a ridiculous return. Now, as, as I thought would happen, Hazard's price would continue to drop down. He's around uh, 850 right now, I believe. There's one there for 890. Um, there's 885. Uh, so it looks like 885 or so. 880 there. And his price will continue to drop, right? As I said a week or so ago, his price will go down to about 800,000 coins, in my opinion. I still think that will happen, but uh, I don't mind the fact that I've paid almost a million for him because I have no intention of selling him. I, I don't really have any intention of selling anyone in this team. Um, I, th there's, there's a few things that I might want to do. I might want to upgrade Marcelo from his team of the season version to his team of the year version. Um, the main reason for that is, isn't because I think that he's a bad card at all because I really like his card. The, the biggest reason is literally because of that pace. The extra five pace is huge. The physical defending, dribbling, passing and shooting is negligible. It's two points in each section. Only really defending and physical are that important. And because of the shadow card, defending is massively covered anyway. It basically goes to 99 defending. Physical is only one point. Dribbling and passing is so high anyway. It doesn't really matter if shooting is irrelevant for a left back. So it's only for those five points. But his team of the year card is about 400,000 coins, I believe. Um, his team of the year card is, if it wants to load up on foot bin, let's go foot bin, come on, there we go, so his team of the year card is currently 400,000 coins, um, and his team of the season was 160, uh, so I, I, right now, um, with footies coming up and stuff, I can't justify spending an extra 240,000 coins to upgrade this Marcelo to the 93 Marcelo. Even though I do have the coins available, just, I can't justify it. And the same thing with Sergio Ramos, I'm not going to upgrade to his Team of the Year card. I could upgrade to his Team of the Year card, but I'm not going to upgrade to his Team of the Year card. And the reason being is because as you can see on the stats there, uh, Sergio Ramos has one more pace, one more shooting... Two more passing, one defending, sorry, one dribbling, one physical and two defending. But again, with the shadow chem style, um, which I put on him just for that that sheer pace, you know, his physical's so high anyway. Uh, it's not worth it. His team of the year card is 610, around 650 most days, and his team of the season was 375. So you're looking again at like an extra 350,000 coins to upgrade those negligible stats. It, I, think, I think in terms of Ramos, it's not worth it. The 95 is just perfect the 96 for its value is too high priced i think for marcelo because of the pace it is worth the upgrade but for me personally right now it's not worth the upgrade when it's going to cost me everything so this is my starting team before we get into everything else this is my bench i know i've got isco i know people are probably saying why not just use isco here instead of Modric? i'll show that when we i show you what the team looks like um in game um we've got a good bench son is a meta sub, uh, obviously an incredible striker. Um, 
Alonso is also a meta sub for me defensively. I did have Dario Serna here, but Dario Serna was 5'10", high, high, and only had marginally better stats than Alonso. Um, and I thought, you know what, this Alonso is 6'2", high, high, 3-star, three 3-star three as well. Um, I would I would be open to getting a new defensive-minded midfielder. I was looking at maybe using Hummels as a CDM, because, you know, he's got 6'3", uh, very nice defending physical passing, pretty decent pace. His problem is 2-star skill moves and high medium, so he's not in. Um, I, I, was, I only had these dudes on the bench because they were the highest rated. I also have Danilo Pereira. Um, but Danilo Pereira, although his card stats are quite nice, um, he's got a few issues within his card. Um, I, I have him untradeable, right? Like, we've got him in a team of the season upgrade. Um, his defending and physical are nice. His passing is pretty good as well. I know it says 78 there, but his short passing and long passing are actually quite nice. But his vision's terrible. And his pace isn't great for a CDM. So when I compare him to Alonso, Alonso's got 10 pace points more, 12 shooting points more, uh, 6 passing points more, a little more dribbling. And then, although quite a lot less physical and defending, um, his extra height and, and I think his extra pace really makes up for that a little bit more than using Danilo Pereira. I just think it's, it's better in that sense. So we've got, for meta subs, we've got Son and Alonso for the midfield and attack. And we've got Calais on as a winger now. I, I, I would be, again, opening to open to getting someone else instead of Calais on. You know, the two-star, three-star is not ideal. Um, but I, I struggle to take any of these dudes off up top with Lukaku, Hazard and Mertens unless they are absolutely dead on their feet because I just really, really enjoy playing with them. So on top of that, we've got Stindl. We've got Giuliano, who is an incredible sub. Five-star skill moves. He's a little bit shorter, but he can make waves anywhere and Stindle as well Stindle can get played anywhere as a meta as well midfield CDM or cam Stindle can go and then as another cam we've got Isco also and then as a fun sub we've got our pack pulled Samuel Etu he hasn't made any appearances yet um, but he's definitely someone that eventually will get some game time when I have to bring off one of the attackers and, and the team is uh the team is um you know tired so why this team well this team starts as a 4-3-2-1 just for chemistry I'm fully aware that I could start Lukaku at centre mid and then Donker at striker. Um, oh no, that wouldn't even get everyone to 10 chem anymore because of what I've done. Yeah, no, yeah, ignore that. Anyway, I, when I had Nengolan there, I could have got everyone to 10 chem, but I decided not to. Um, so yeah, then Donker is on 8 chemistry and uh, Mertens is on 7 chemistry. But in game, the team looks like this. In game, we swap to that and uh, it actually looks like this. So in-game, this is what the team looks like. I'm starting to use a 4 one 2 one 2 This was based off the opinion of Inception, who is a uh, no longer a FIFA streamer because he doesn't like the game this year, but he's an incredible FIFA player. He's got an incredible record in FIFA. He performs extremely well with foot champs, and he suggested to me to build the team this way. Takes into consideration some fundamentals that I love, um, some players that I enjoy, some players that I've got untradeable, and the, you know players that I want to use, and then some opinions of what he wants. So he said to me that one of the issues that I had with uh, having Isco in midfield here was the fact that it's not defensive enough. You know, he gives you great things going forwards, but he doesn't give you anything going backwards. And he said in this game's meta, you know, in, in the way this game works, it's it's important to have midfielders, flat midfielders, not the cam. Mertens is irrelevant that he doesn't have good defending because he's a cam. But in terms of your centre mids or lower it's important that they also have good defensive duties because the way this team gets set up is that you can score up front with any amount of players. It's the defensive issues you, you want to you kind of uh, like overcome. And so lot, this weekend league just gone when I had the 4-1-2-1-2 or the 4-3-2-1 with players that I loved. You know, we had that sick meta team with Nate Golan and stuff. That team wasn't good enough because it wasn't strong enough defensively. And one of the reasons why I went with Hamshik instead of Nate Golan um, is because, again, and I, and I agree with this, and I could I could see this myself, and I could tell this myself, but I wanted to believe the hype of Nangolan because we have used him a lot this year throughout the year, is, uh, you know, Nangolan, uh, the words of Inception, is a linear player. One of his biggest problems is that he's three-star, three-star, uh, and he's short. So you're very limited with what you can do with Nangolan. With Hamishik, he's six foot tall, so he's big, he's powerful in the midfield, he'll win you headers, he'll win those physical battles, and he's got a four-star weak foot. So when cutting inside, if you need a finesse shot or a pass on that left foot, he's going to be far more effective than uh, Nain Golan is. When you actually look at Hamshik with a shadow card on as well, which is obviously what I've got him on, um, his stats just become ridiculous. 
Uh, he actually becomes a 98 rated left forward, right forward, centre forward, cam and centre mid. A 97 rated striker, left wing, right wing, left mid, right mid. A 95 CDM, a 96 left back, right back, right wing back, left wing back and a 94 rated centre back. That's how good this card is. I could play him at centre back and he would be better for me than most other centre backs. That's how good he is. Um... And it, overall, his stats go to 96 pace, 95 shot, 96 passing, 97 dribbling, 95 defending, 92 physical. So he's basically like a better version of Nain Golan for a quarter of the price. Uh, he's got better weak foot, he's taller, and uh, he gives that strong link into Koulibaly. And that is, again, one of the, the, one of the biggest problems I had this weekend league just gone. And I noticed it throughout the weekend league. And, I, and uh, although I knew it was an issue... Um, I didn't change it this weekend league because I wanted to I wanted to get through the whole weekend before doing anything about it is that I was playing with Sergio Ramos and Nacho Fernandez and Sergio Ramos himself is only six foot tall and Nacho is 5'11 and I noticed for a change that I conceded far more headed goals specifically from near post flick on corners. Hyung Min Son because I, what is Son six foot? Yeah Hyung Min Son at six foot gets the edge on Ramos and gets the edge on Nacho Fernandez. So I had to get myself a nice tall defender and that is where Koulibaly comes in. Yep, he's got high, high work rates. Yes, I have two high attacking uh, work rates, but that's not a problem because of the way I've set the team up. But generally speaking, having a guy at 6'5 is instrumental. Not only is he 6'5, he's so fast. And he's just so good defensively. You know, he's actually, I've, I've loved using him. I notice him in the team all the time, which is awesome. So that's why I changed the team and how I set the team up. You know, all three of my midfielders, that I've got shadow on all three of them anyway. Modric goes up to, um, well, so first of all, anyway, uh, Hamshit goes up to 95 defending. Dendonka is on 99 defending. And Modric goes up to, with the shadow chem style, uh, goes up to 94 defending, but he actually gets 99 slide tackle, 99 stand tackle, 97 interceptions. It's only his heading that lets him down, and that's because he's 5'9". But where he's a lot better than what Nangolan offered, even though he's the same height as Nangolan, is he has 4-star, four 4-star, four whereas Nangolan had 3-star, three 3-star. Three so Modric, Dendonka, and Hamšík, offensively and defensively, these are all beasts. Even, even Dendonka offensively is a monster. 87 shooting and 92 passing. The dude is a beast all round, right? So we've got an incredible attack. We've got now an incredible midfield. And we've now got an incredible defense to the point where the, like, the only thing that I was struggling with was goalkeeper. I could have put David De Gea, team of the season, off Kemp in here. But then Koulibaly would have lost chemistry. I could have put um, Jan Oblak in goal, but Koulibaly would have lost chemistry. I could put Pepe Reina in goal. But he doesn't have giant throw and he's not very good uh, anyway. Like his, card's, his card is just very, very, uh, just very bad, isn't it? You know, it's, it's an upgraded card, but uh, sorry, he does, he does have the long throw. He doesn't, he doesn't, uh, he does have the long throw, but he's just got 80 diving. Uh, well, actually, when we look at Van der Sar, he's got 80 versus 84, one less handling, two more kicking, four less reflexes, a lot less positioning. I don't know that Van der Sar is the right dude. Van der Sar at 6'6", six, six, I enjoy, however. I think Van der Sar at 6'6", six, six is big. Um, obviously big, big, but, you know, big anyway. Um, but I, I'd be open to changing the goalkeeper, maybe for going for someone like a uh, Schmeichel or something like that, like a, a Peter Schmeichel, not a Kasper Schmeichel. Um, I think he might be well more well-rounded. But what Van der Sar does have is he does have uh, the, the giant throw, or the long throw, or whatever it's called. So I don't mind using Van der Sar. You know, it's the first legend we've had in, had in the team. I think this team in general is just incredibly well balanced. To get this team though, guys, to get this team, I had to sell everything. Like everything. You know, uh, we got Modric, Alves, Hazard, Ramos. Uh, we got Mertens, Hamšík, Lukaku, Koulibaly, Marcelo. Then we got the two silver team of the seasons. And then David De Gea, who I'm just keeping in the club because I've played so many games with him. And uh, there's no point selling him. I'm sure I'll use him again eventually somewhere down the line. And then I've got nothing left. But like that's it. Other than what's on the trade pile, I've got a lot of silver and a lot of bronze cards again because of bronze pack method. I have some uh, consumables, a uh, few healings that we're going to be getting rid of, but nothing too crazy. A few fitnesses that we'll be getting rid of, but nothing too crazy. And in fact, I still need more individual fitness cards um, for this upcoming weekend league uh, because I am going to be using one team. And then I've got what I've got on the bench. So we've got 210,000 coins. 
uh, maybe 310, maybe, maybe 400,000 after all said and done. Uh, you know, once all the bronze stuff sells, once the three team of the season cards or the three special cards have got there, we'd, we'd have maybe 400,000 coins. Now that 400,000 coins is going to be for me during footies. Of course, we've got 50 more thousand coins coming from our foot champs finish this weekend league uh, and the two 100k packs, which I don't know when I'm going to open them um, because it's as EA released the information, footies won't be in packs. So there's there's no way to pack the footies card, so I don't know what to do with them. You'll also see I've got a premium gold pack, which I won from the daily knockout tournament, and a rare players pack, the 50k pack, which I won from the offline tournament. I'll show you that offline tournament now. I uh, went and played that offline tournament to get the win. Yep, it was boring as hell. An hour of absolute hell that I hated. The quad league challenge, you can see there's 2,000 coins for the next win. If you go and do this now, there's still two days. Probably by the time you're watching this video, one day and 19 hours left uh, for you to get yourself a 50k pack for essentially free. Um, and then that, that's where we're at. So I've got those two things there. And, and then I just need, uh, I literally just need um, fitness cards for this weekend league. So bronze pack method is going to be coming back huge for me. Because first of all, I think it's an effective way to make coins. Uh, it's good to fill the club up. Remember a few, before Team of the Season, when I was clear, clearing out my club ready for Team of the Season, I had 4,500 players. And I, lot, I dropped that all the way down to 400 to 500 players. I'm now up at 2,600 players again. And let me tell you, dudes, I could, probably, I could probably get rid of everything to the point where I had 50 players left. I have got a lot of untradeable players in the club. Um, that are that obviously are important to the to the club. Uh, if we look at the special cards, once we get rid of these dudes here, um, you know we we start here. We've got Isco, we've got Suarez, we've got Hummels, we've got incredible players here: All Black, Ibra, Lewandowski, Silva, Hazard, Torres, Alderweireld, Stindl, Juliano, Lukaku. That will not see the light of day again. Son, Marquinhos, Dendonga, and these these cards will get used here and there when we need them for uh, daily knockout tournaments and what's to come for the rest of FIFA. But I think for the, the remainder of FIFA, I just want to use this team. I want to upgrade Marcelo <coughs> when it's fitting. And I'm also very, very intrigued about potentially up changing um, uh, Dries Mertens. And the reason why I'm intrigued in changing Dries Mertens is because I like Carrasco and uh, I could fit Carrasco into this team and get Carrasco at left forward here on Kem. Hazard would then be off Kem. Dendonka would be the same. Hamshik would suffer for chemistry. He would go down to seven chemistry. But it would be a situation where instead of having what we have now, where we have one eight Kem, one seven Kem, the rest ten Kem, if you imagine that um, if you imagine that Carrasco here at left forward would be on ten Kem, instead of you know, the only person that loses Kem would actually miss out three Kem on Hamshik. So I don't know if I would definitely be up for doing that. It's just something that potentially could be up for doing. Um, but that, that's where we're at, guys. So I just wanted to share that with you. I wanted to show you what I've done, where I've got to, what we're doing. And um, the next video is hopefully going to be monthly rewards. Monthly and re weekly. Obviously, the weekly, I don't know if I'm going to open or not. Because I don't know if it's worth opening the two 100k packs. But for monthly... Oh, it's going to be worth it. If I get a sick player, any of these players that I've got in my club, in this team, that are sellable. So, Koulibaly, Ramos, Marcelo, Hamshik, Hazard, Lukaku or Mertens. If any of those come out in my monthly 20 players, rest assured that Marcelo will immediately get upgraded. Unless it is Marcelo that is the player, then he'll just go in there. And uh, we'll also look at potentially building a second super team. Because if I get some big, like let's say I get a red Hazard, I can now sell Hazard for a million coins. I'll have 1.4 million coins in the bank. That's enough now to have two incredible teams that I will love rather than one exceptional team and one fun team. I'll go to two meta teams. Um, so it really does depend on what comes out in the monthlies. But this dude is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now guys, I'm out. Peace.